Welcome to episode 28 of Vampire Survivors Like Game in Unity. Object Spawn Manager. Long time ago we have implemented messages of damage from our attack, but we haven't made it so message from damage will show up from our projectiles. No problem. In the projectile create a new method called post message. Pass damage and position where we will post the message. And call it when we hit target. That should be it. Let's check it. Good. Now we want to introduce multiple new types of stage events. To identify type of the stage event, make a new enum called stage event type. Let's make three types for now. Spawn enemy, spawn object and win stage. Add variable for stage event type into event class. And for spawn object, add object to spawn public variable. Good. Now in stage event manager, we want to utilize the event type to execute commands based on event type. We have spawn enemy already implemented. Keep the message and indexer outside the switch statement, because they will be executed regardless of the type of the event. Good. Now we want to spawn an object. Now we want to spawn an object. As an example, between ways you want to spawn a bunch of chests, so player can pick some of them up. In the Drop on destroy, we spawn object by instantiating it. But we want to migrate this into separate spawn manager. So on the world cre create and add a new component called spawn manager. Spawn manager will be responsible sp for spawning objects. So let's copy the process of spawning from the drop on destroy spawn process.
Now in the drop-on destroy we want to call the spawn object. To make it easy to use, let's make the spawn manager static, so we can easily call it from drop-on destroy. Besides drop and destroy, we have spawn object, which spawn objects on tiles like chests. So use spawn manager inside spawn object too. Just remember from now on, if you are spawning game objects, you should use the spawn manager, which will handle the spawning and managing these objects on the scene. To test this, let's select spawn object and set it to always be spawned. Okay, it spawns, but our knives can't hit it. We will fix it at the end of this episode. Right now, spawned object is being instantiated into the essential scene, which I don't like. Let's create a new container object on the level, which we will call objects, and move spawn manager to this new game object. Then when you instantiate your new object, set the parent to this container. Now our spawned chests are parented to the object container on the gameplay stage. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description and join button available right now on YouTube. If you join at $10 or more, you will get access to project files on Patreon. Good, we have a spawn manager, and now let's say on the stage, after 5 seconds, we want to spawn 15 chests around the player. Open Stage Event Manager. And in Spawn Object, we want to spawn objects based on the event settings on the position of the player.
Now if we launch the game after 5 seconds, game will spawn a bunch of chests on our position of our player. But that's the problem, we're trying to spawn 15 chests in one exactly the same position and ends up spawning all of them on the position of the player. We want to scatter those chests around by using some kind of, of pattern. And actually we already have a pattern generation, a square pattern around the character, which we use to spawn enemies. This is a code which generates position in the square pattern. But it is defined only in enemies manager. We want to use this pattern in other cases. So create a new class called utility tools. Inside we will move our square pattern generation into the static method, which will return the random position in the square pattern. Now instead of using local method to generate position, we will use static method from utilities. Let's go back to the stage event manager. Let's extract the process of spawning of the objects into the separate method and extract enemy spawning into separate method to help with the readability of our code. Now in the spawn object we want to get the player position. Right now we are passing the player position as position to spawn objects. Because we are spawning object around the player. Then we want to generate position on square pattern. For now pass new vector to the size of 5. So you know our uh, objects will be spawning in the square uh, pattern around the character on the um, distance of 5. And use this position to spawn object. As you can see our game spawn chest in the square pattern around the player. We will be expanding on this pattern generation in the episodes to come. For now let's fix daggers not hitting the chests. The reason why our daggers are not colliding with chests is because we are explicitly state that we are seeking enemies instead of anything which is damageable. So change type to be I damageable. Good.
This is it for this episode. Special thank you to David Fahey and the Salt Hashdu. With best regards, see you in the next episode.